What is going on everybody? So this is going to be a quick run through of how to get PG Admin and Postgres SQL going locally and loading some data so you can start playing around with and learning SQL. So I have this GitHub repository here with a Docker Compose file and we can just copy the HTTPS link and we're just going to clone that and actually I had this open before so Visual Studio should jump right in all right so we have the credentials here for Postgres and PG admin I went ahead and used uh, docker volumes rather than bind mounts there are quite a few issues that you can run into with permissions uh, especially the PG admin data directory you can fix that with uh, chmod 777 or I believe ch own uh, 50 50 recursively but to get around all that I just went ahead and did docker volumes and in the docker file we make a directory called data and we copy the data that's here over to that directory and then I just have a SQL file that creates a stored procedure drops the tables if they exist creates the table and runs a copy on the CSVs I loaded the data before with pandas but that took 10 and a half minutes whereas the copy takes about 24 seconds so you get quite a performance boost using copy and the files do need to be local so it just copies them from the data directory and the load script uh, just calls psql uh, creates the stored procedure that we just saw and then runs it and then just prints out a nice little message here so uh, we can jump right in the data is out here on Kaggle I was going to put that in the github repo but it's a little too big and I was going to just w get or curl the data but apparently you can't do that with the Kaggle data sets and I thought it would be confusing to uh, talk about adding your credentials uh, making an account all that so you can just go out here grab that file it will take a moment to download and while that's going by the time I type this it'll probably already be there so I'm just gonna copy it from the shorthand for my home directory downloads dot for current directory data and just put it there too many arguments let's see oh I want to copy not change directory there we go now if we go to the data directory we can see the archive there we'll just unzip that and then we'll just remove the archive directory and I think we are good to go we'll run that in detach mode and we just need to grab the container name and we will want an interactive terminal on SQL practice flight data PG database and we want to drop into a bash okay so we can see 
all of the files here. Uh, you can ignore this archive file. I should have rebuilt the Docker Compose without cache, uh, but it should still work. So we're just going to run the load. And while that's running, we can go to PG Admin, which should be running on localhost 8080. And the password is root. If you get lost there, you can look, and there's our username and password for PG Admin. Same with Postgres, that is a named service. I didn't explicitly make a network, but because they're in Docker Compose, by default they're put into the same network. So we can flip back here and register a server. We can call it the same as the service name, that's okay. And the host name, it'll be able to see. We want username root and password root. Make sure you do not put that in as the maintenance database. I make that mistake quite frequently. And if we look here, go to schemas and tables. All right, we can see we have all of our tables here. And let's go ahead and bring this down, get out of the container. And these should have automatically been removed. We do not see them there. If we want to be sure, we can do a, a Docker container prune. Zero bytes removed, so they were not there. And if we go ahead and bring this back up, we should have the connection details persisted there. Probably take a moment just to come up. Oh, that was faster than usual. And put in the password and we'll go ahead and save that. And you know what, let's bring it down again, see if it asks us to re-enter that. You don't need to run the Docker container prune every time. I'm just a little OCD. Okay, we'll bring that back up. And reload. We'll have to log back in here. All right. And if we go to the flights database, and we go to the tables, and we can just make sure that that got populated by running a count on flights. And 322. We can always check this by going back to the data set here. And yep, 322. So the data did load. Hopefully, this helps some of you out and got you going locally with some data. And now you can run queries, play around. Uh, read up on the data set, find out which values are foreign keys in which table, uh, combine them. Uh, I mean, you could actually go in here and look at the notebooks, see what other people have done. Uh, it's probably in Python and R, but you could run SQL queries and, 
and probably match the type of analysis they're doing. Uh, but anyway, hopefully that helps some of you out and got you going with some data to help you on your SQL journey. All right, have a good one, everybody.